Hi, welcome back to my studio practice. Um, welcome. Uh, I'm now getting ready for a new project. And you can see that I've got a daler board, um, which is very, very old stock. Um, I just decided to start using up supplies that I had and um, this was lying around. It's a 14 by 10 inch fine grain canvas board. It looks like it's yellowed a little bit from the years. Now, um, my plan is for May. In May, where can we see? Okay, that's better. In May, we can uh, study or try to learn lessons from the art of Henri Rousseau. And the reason he uh, suggests himself to me as an idea is because of his um, his jungle work. So his artwork features uh, jungles. So what is that? That is 30. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring out in centimeters what this is. 35 and a half. So we have 35 and a half by twenty five and a tad. And what I want to do is divide these by three because I'm going to be exploring a, um, a device for composition. So what I'm struggling to find is the expression compositional device, um, which is called the rule of thirds. So let's say that was 36. 36 divided by 3 is 1, 2, is 12. So roughly about 12 centimetres. So we'll mark out 12 centimetres. About there. 12. And another 12. And the same again down here, we will have 12, and then just for ease, 24. And connect those up together, but lightly, because it's very easy to score into this surface, especially when you're using a hard pencil like this. This is a 4H. Okay. So there we have three thirds going along the long direction of the canvas board. And if we take this in this direction, we have 25. So let's say 24 would be 3 eighths. So just over 8 there, 8 and 16, 8 and 16. So let's try 8 and 16 here along the first third. So we've got 8 and 16. And then we've got 8 and 16 centimetres across the second third. And we'll just join them up. So we can do this easily. This away. And I missed by a tad, but that's not a problem. Not a problem to me. Because what we have done is we've managed to identify four key points. These points here are of interest. So if we make sure that in our artwork we have, you know, something of interest in these areas, um, it should 
lead to a reasonable composition. For me, for this one, I'm going to be trying to learn from the art of Henri Matisse. And so what I want to do is try and uh, not copy, but be inspired by one of his uh, jungle artworks, because that is a reasonable segue from the Costa Rican jungle flora and fauna art that I've been creating from my unconscious mind. And here I'm making a logical and conscious decision to say, right, what can I learn from uh, uh, Henri, uh, Henri Rousseau um, that will be obvious to me? So looking at this now, we have a top third and a lower two thirds for land or compositionally we could have a very large sky of two thirds sky and a little bit of land we could put a building or a detail here or some other kind of feature here like a person or something something happening in the sky some kind of feature at these critical points here to create a composition that's of interest but for me i know that what i want to do is create a sky here and have a very dark area because one thing that I learned about uh, Rousseau is that the uh, the background is almost black. So we're going to have a blue sky, a third of a blue sky here, and we're going to have a dark black foil to set our artwork against. And so, we can begin. Uh, I've already stained uh, another canvas. I've stained another canvas um, olive uh, because um, I don't think uh, this project for um, May is going to take too long. I think it's going to be quite quite a speedy thing to learn. Um, from someone whose art I admire. And so you'll possibly be wondering why I'm painting my sky area red. And it's a kind of red-orange that I'm aiming for. So I'm pulling some of my cadmium red into my cad yellow light. And I just want to block in some kind of delineation between what is going to be the sky area and what is going to be the land area. Orange is actually a reasonable choice, although this is quite red for what I'm doing, but I'm just using up the stuff which is on my um, mixing palette um, from the work that I've been doing in April, which still needs to be finished, of course. So uh, that's a bit more orangey there. Okay, so roughly one third is the sky area. So yeah, orange isn't as far out as you may believe because um, orange is the complementary of blue. And if we're going to make a blue sky, uh, basing it on top of an orange uh, backdrop or foil, is fairly reasonable. Those complementaries could work together. If you create a blue sky on top of orange, you get that warmth coming through. There's a lot you could actually do with um, those colours. But I have another reason for this for later on. But yeah, orange 
will help control the blues that go on in the sky area in subsequent layers. This is a smooshing brush, Rosemary & Co. I'm not sponsored by them. This is the Tree and Texture Series 32 and it's a 3 8 of an inch. And here we have blue, it's a French ultramarine blue, which I'm putting onto the board along with it should be a nice burnt umber or raw umber is the darker of the two umbers it's the cooler one so i've been inclined to go with raw umber and so I'm being a little bit bold here by just mixing the paint straight onto this board. But my own mixing palette has become a mess and I'm not completely comfortable with that mess. I don't particularly like it. Just water. Just water in the early stages. So this is the leanest of my lean layers. Windsor and Newton do have a um, thinner and the thing about the thinner is that it's supposed to regulate the colour shift that can happen so because I'm just using water here I've mentioned it in the other project but you may just be joining me for this one so I'll reiterate it that if you just use water with water mixable oils then you can experience a little bit of color shift so your darks will lighten and your light colors will darken and may do so in ways that you don't anticipate if you're using just water if you use their uh, thinner then it has a slower drying time and the chemical properties of the thinner react in such a way that it evaporates more slowly and due to that fact I presume that there's less of a colour shift. Now having said all that, which they have in their own literature, if you go online and Look at what Winsor & Newton say about their own products. At this stage, I'm not really that fast. I just know that I'm preparing a board, um, doing some pre preliminary uh, blocking in, which will help seal the pre-primed surface. So. It wouldn't matter, the surface is already pre-primed uh, on this board. But by adding these layers on, yes, I'm going to give a coat of colour which will help seal in the surface. Okay. If you just use water, it does tend to dry out some colours quite quickly. I think it's reasonable to make notes of um, each of your sessions that you create, your painting sessions, whether you have a diary or you just record it like I do, warts and all. I don't have enough energy left over for um, you know, spending that energy on editing. So I've just resolved to do warts and all uh, presentations. Because that's the one that allows me to do the work and just focus my efforts on 
uh, the thing that I love doing, which is painting, and not the thing that I don't like doing, which is editing videos. So, I think it would have been better to try and cover a large area, a relatively large area. This isn't my biggest painting. I've painted three metres by three metres before. Uh, live in a public space with uh, public engagement. So this is very, very small. But in terms of this brush, the ratio of this brush to this surface, this is a small brush for this surface. So um, it would be better to use a much, much bigger brush and get this work done more speedily. But I'm just happy to be having a good enough day today that I actually feel like covering this board. My channel, my YouTube channel and my Patreon are Guitar Therapy. So guitar, art and therapy because I suffer from uh, ME and I use this art to mitigate some of the worst effects of my ME which are you know physical and uh, there's physical complications and there's uh, mood mental health issues as well it'd be very easy for a person who's you know limited in their energy and, and spends up to 18 hours in bed or on the sofa to become depressed and so being involved in something creative like this is a very good mood regulator and at the same time as this when my concentration's uh, good it's not good at the moment so you'll notice in my narration i repeat myself and i have half finished sentences and things i lose my own thread um, but that's just something we have to learn learn to live with learn to cope with but I have enough energy and mental concentration to prepare this board. Now, this looks uh, quite dramatic. And I have lost my four critical points. There was an expression which I'm struggling to remember, which is the expression for them. And now I'm just playing with the paint. So the surface is covered, but I'm just actually enjoying uh, the physicality of just pushing paint around on the surface. The paint is thin enough right now and at this stage to be fairly self-leveling. So while it's not going to be a perfectly polished surface, it is going to be smooth enough for, for drawing on. There's going to be no lumps and bumps with um, yeah, things like impasto or even oleo pasto where the the memory of the hairs of the brush and the, the motion of the, the hand are retained in the structure of the paint on the substrate. Substrate is the word that they use for the surface that you're painting on. So roughly a third which is um, this kind of red orange color and roughly two thirds. If you've been watching carefully, you'll have noticed that I've gone over, gone over my mark a little bit. I've gone slightly over, but it doesn't matter as long as it's not the halfway mark. Uh, as long as it's not the halfway mark, it should be relatively pleasing to the eye compositionally but with these oil paints you have the option to uh, rectify what you do so you can just go over with another opaque layer and sort out your drawing or correct your drawing
So I feel happy about this uh, today. I'm setting this up so that I am going to have a sky up here. I'm going to have a feature in the sky. And then this dark area here is going to be the backdrop, which um, acts as a very dark foil for anything for, um, that I paint on it should pop. So any color that I put on this black surface should pop more than if I'd say put uh, a burnt umber or an olive surface. Like for instance, this is going to be Henri uh, Rousseau. And this board here, which was also stained today before I started recording, is um, just stained with uh, olive. So it's an olive that is straight out of the tube. But if you want to, you can make your olive with, um, you know, any of the blacks. You know, um, oftentimes, you know, carbon black. Uh, and a yellow, maybe a dulled yellow, like yellow ochre, which is um, a lovely earth colour. Or what I've been using lately is cadmium yellow light. So that mixed with black would give you an olive colour, which would help stain like this. So this is going to be a Frida Kahlo inspired uh, artwork. I'm going to try and learn from Kahlo after uh, I've shared or gone through the process of trying to learn from another artist. And in this case, it's going to be Henri Rousseau. Thank you so much for joining me on this little presentation and um, to set up things in readiness for May, which should be becoming live uh, later on on uh, YouTube. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you this is useful to you and you learn something from it uh, or are even inspired just to explore your own creativity wherever you happen to be. Thank you for viewing. Bye now. See you in the next one.